Uh, so first, Emily Lawless, I love the ears. Allegiance Home Health is the sponsor of Prime. They, they actually teamed up with us when we first started this program many years ago, and they said, absolutely, we would support this, and they've been a supporter ever since. So Emily, tell us a little bit about Allegiance. Yes, so hi, happy um, Easter and Passover. I'm Emily Lawless. Um, growing up with a special needs brother, amongst other things, has taught me the importance of a helping hand as a caregiver, as a care coordinator with Allegiance Home Health, um, helping others is a daily occurrence for me. At Allegiance Home Health, we provide private caregivers, um, nurses, physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists in the comfort of your own home. So when someone is in need of um, care, maybe driving to doctor's appointments, um, getting groceries, light housekeeping, that's where we can come in with a private caregiver to assist um, the elderly, uh, maybe your parents, a neighbor. And so, yeah, so I'm Emily Lawless. Um, we're a five-star Medicare rated home health agency too. So we also provide that skilled care where um, if someone was had a stroke or maybe surgery, we would come in after um, with a prescription from the doctor. And our five-star rating is based off of patient um, satisfaction and our results. So uh, Emily Lawless, Allegiance Home Health. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. And, um, you know, I personally know some people that have used Allegiance and have been very happy with their service. One thing that's amazing is that all of the employees are employees, not yes. independent 1099, which makes a huge difference when it comes to, to home health. So, yeah. you know, they're definitely a great uh, company. So we are going to move on to Jennifer Marcourt, who's actually going to introduce Cara because Jen has a very long lasting relationship with Cara, adores her and said, please let me introduce her. So Jen Marcourt. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I said, come on, let me do that. And so I'm sort of going to stick to the script, but not really, because I'm going to tell you guys maybe some things that you don't know and maybe things that Cara doesn't want you to know, but too bad because I have known Cara for almost 15 years or longer. I can't remember. That's how long it's been in my old feeble mind. So I, I, I've known Cara since I was too young to be in prime. Let's talk about that. All right. So Cara Clap, here's the official bio. Why be told to think outside the box when one lives in a vast array of unlimited dimensions? Seems silly to ever be confined by a square spatial structure in the first place. Thinking limitlessly is how Cara got her start. Fresh from graduate school in advertising design, she landed her first design job at Landor Associates in San Francisco, working on accounts such as FedEx, Edie's Ice Cream, Nabisco, Lay's, and Oral-B allowed her to be surrounded by design talent and the whirlwind that is packaging and consumer products branding industry. Eventually, en route from Paris, Manchester, and Los Angeles, she made her way to the Guinness Grand Metropolitan Company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Guinness Grand Met headquartered Pillsbury, haagen Green Giant, and Old El Paso in the cold Midwestern city. After a couple of years working mainly with Pillsbury, she desired to regain feeling in her toes and came to South Florida to sink them in the sand and surf. Since being down in South Florida, Cara enjoyed working for a couple of design agencies and then decided to branch out and start her own shortly after finding mutual talent along the way in Gladiola Cantola. Now, why Gladiola isn't on the call today for me to say hi to, I do not know. Zach Lunch is now able to showcase that world why branding expertise down here in South Florida for both local and national clientele. Finally, Cara is able to think at her own pace with no box-like constraints. The one thing, a couple things that you forgot, Miss Cara, she's a mom of an amazing teenager. So kudos to that because she's a single mom. And Cara is the kind of person, just so you all know, because this is way too formal, if you're thinking about it, and you can't verbalize it. You can see it in your mind and you sort of know what you want. Cara goes in and literally can extract it from your mind and make it a reality. So Cara clap. Thank you. That's quite the introduction. So we're ready for my presentation. Okay. Um, I am going to go over some of my background and we'll get to that, but uh, 
you just heard quite a bit about it. So let me just jump right into it and I'm gonna share my screen. All right, so we're gonna go over branding and digital strategy. I was kind of asked, you know, I, I'm gonna go kind of deep into branding, but then really talk about what types of digital things you guys can do because it's such a, a confusing kind of thing in this world now. And especially now with COVID, it's just gotten a little out of control with, um, you know, how much we need to be online and how much we need to be in front of people. So we kind of dive into some of the different avenues uh, that you can take to get your brand out there into the universe. All right, well, our tagline at SAC Lunch is conceptually fresh and kind of like what Jennifer was saying, it really is about trying to keep, keep fresh ideas, keep in front of people, keep moving, keep enjoying, you know, how you can be different because if you're not different and you're all the same, then you really are not gonna stand out. I wanna give you a little quick history about us. Um, this is our 13th year in South Florida and Delray Beach. Uh, as an agency, we are the whole package. What does it mean to be the whole package? Uh, we really do everything from soup to nuts in the sense of, you know, we start with your brand, we start with your logo, and then we can literally do, you know, we could use Greg, Greg and Amy, you know, Amy can promote certain things on, you know, logos everywhere, get your name out there. Greg, on the other hand, you know, we'll design anything that you can wrap on a truck, we do billboards, we do video, we do 3D animation. If anybody's familiar with the brand Celsius, um, actually I'm very proud of this. I should have put this in the presentation, but we put an April Fool's joke up on their social media yesterday and they had over, over almost 13,000 likes and over a thousand comments. And it was just that they're coming out with energy gummies. But so yeah. that kind of thing, we can do just about anything. Um, yeah, it had more it had more traction than any other post they'd ever had. So it was, I it was, fell for it. Did you? Okay. Yeah. Um, I was so excited. I commented like first and everything. Well, I, I told them, I said, you know, you guys gotta talk to the CEO because like you're gonna have to make these now. Cause everybody was like pissed that, you know, that they didn't actually make them. And it was like a cotton candy. And so we had a 3D artist. If anybody goes on Instagram and looks up Celsius official, we had a 3D artist. Um our guy who does the animation and everything, he made these gummies, they look totally realistic. Um, we put it into space, it, it's pretty cool. And I wanted to animate it, but literally, unfortunately everybody does everything last minute. So um, we didn't have time to do that, but go check it out, it's pretty neat. But so that's the whole point. We really, our thing is when it comes to your brand, uh, you don't need to worry, we've got this in the bag. Um, so our process, and this is something that you guys should all think about when it comes to your own brand. You know, we try to discover who you are, what, who is our client, what do they need? Every single client is different. And Candace is new to uh, selling for us and she's great. And you guys can reach out to her anytime you need any help. But it's funny because I always, I always say, you know, I can't sit there and give anybody just a general quote because every single person is different. And we're going to get into how you should understand that your brand is different. You can't just say, hey, I want a business card and, you know, it get like a regular business card. If anyone's seen ours, we put ours in a little bag. Um, you know, everything sticks to your brand. So we try to conceptualize what's best for you. Then we try to create that working with you, with your team. Then you need to implement um, what you're doing. You know, we've, we come up, we strategize. You can come up with a marketing plan for a year, implement it. And then, you know, the whole point is to grow your business. If, if you're not growing, then, uh, then you're probably not that successful. Um, I just want to say a little shout out to my team. There's actually, my, our artist is working hard. I think we're filling three more positions right now. I've got them online. I'm interviewing like four more people. Uh, we're looking for another designer, looking for a really great project manager. Um, I am interviewing some people, but we haven't filled those positions yet, but I think we're up to actually 16 of us now. So what we do is each person that comes in, you know, this guy up in the right corner, the kaboom, that's Hampton. He's our illust one of our two illustrators and he drew all of these people. These are all of our team and uh, he's amazing. And he drew some of the things I'm gonna show you uh, coming up in this. So Jennifer kind of, you know, mentioned who I am, but this is how I want you guys to really understand what branding means. And it's hard to explain to people what is a brand, but I want you to think of yourself as a brand because every single one of us in this room is unique. 
and we all come from a different path and everything that we do every day, the way we put ourselves out there, who, how we talk, how we speak, our accent, our language, how we hold ourselves, what we say about ourselves, you know, that's you and you are your own person, which that's what you want your brand to be. Think of how you want people to see you. You know, what, what made your brand? What goes into that? How do you present it to the outside world? So, you know, Jennifer went into a little bit about me. Um, I'm from Fairbanks, Alaska. So all, you know, very, very, very cold. It's horrible. Um, and then I went to college in Los Angeles and then I traveled a lot and I traveled some more. Went to graduate school at Advertising Design in San Francisco. And then, um, as she mentioned, I got a job at the largest branding agency in the world, which was Landor Associates. Then I traveled some more, wound up in England and France. And then I wound up taking the job, as she mentioned, at Guinness Grand Metropolitan. Um, later, I moved to Florida and there are a lot of little small agencies around here, not really doing what I specialized in, which is uh, packaging design and branding for you know, packaging clients. So that's, it's kind of a different ball game because you have to really think of how everything will look on a shelf and what you're against. And it's um, something else. Um, I also own a beverage company, which I didn't mention, but I also know, you know a lot about how that retail space works. Then I moved to Florida. And um, so I started my own agency 13 years ago. And I know Jennifer from the Jewish Federation of South Palm Beach County. I was in agencies and they hired me. I was the first person they finally branch out. They decided to get some outside help rather than keeping everybody in the nonprofit world and hired me to rebrand Federation. Yeah, like 15 years ago, Jennifer, 16, whatever. My son's turning 18 in two weeks. So I, I can tell you how old, how long ago it was because he used to go to Zale Academy when he was two and a half. Um, so, so then we start thinking of, you know, our brands in Sack Lunch. And that's uh, the reason we named it Sack Lunch was because I was a single mom. I am a single mom and every single kid and person is unique. And I kind of liked the idea of, you know, you package their lunch to have what they like in it, what you, you know, what you can afford, what their favorite thing is. And every single client I feel is just as unique as a child. And, um, you know, you need to really pay attention to that. So your brand is your chance to tell your customers a story. Think about that. A strong brand identity and brand promise is possibly the most important thing for an organization. Everyone knows the four P's of traditional marketing, product, place, price, and promotion. These are all important and each one upholds your brand promise. Without that in place, you can get lost in the shuffle among your competitors. Um, creating and properly executing a visual brand identity is so important because you rely on an audience of people who believe in your mission and trust you. And you really need to start thinking about what you put out there, you know, has to build trust. So what is your brand? Brand is not just the logo or the font or the products. It's all these things and much more. It's the customer experience you provide. It's the philosophy you embrace and the culture you adhere to. A brand is a feeling that a business evokes in customers and donors. It's what makes your business unique. To gain trust, you need to have a strong recognizable identity um, that will absolutely ultimately strengthen your reputation. When people see brand consistency, which this is something I'll get more into, and it's very, very important. They begin to recognize that the organization is hopefully successful and that creates organic trust and connection, which can inspire them to get behind your brand and continue coming back. Uh, developing a strategic approach with digital advertising and social media being an integral part is the more modern way and the way of the future. And we are all sitting on the Zoom call, so we know that more than anything now. Uh, this is a great slide, and you know, I think we'll probably wind up sharing my presentation after this with everybody. But think about this, you know, here's your logo. That's just one small part of you. The behavior of your brand, how are you interacting with people, which we'll dive into a little deeper. The language, um, we have, I don't know, our company probably does, I think we're probably getting close to 12 beverage companies right now. And a lot of times like we'll write scripts. So you think of when you're taste testing at um, Costco, for instance, what that woman or man is saying when you're getting that taste we write that, we write the language that you need to put out there. Like you want every employee, you want everybody that's representing your brand, whether it's a, you know, a brand representative that's getting paid from an outside agency, every sh everyone should stick to the script um, and make sure they understand exactly who you are because you want that language to stay consistent. And, you know, obviously be consistent with your vision and your mission. Everything you should do should relate back to that. 
culture, the culture of your company. How do you treat your employees? That gets out there into the community, especially online. You know, people want to say something. There are PR firms that just deal with crisis management, but make sure, you know, everybody's happy and they understand who you are and how you talk. Design, obviously everything that you design needs to be consistent uh, from, you know, just your logo through to your colors, through to everything. And your communication, how you interact with people, especially when we go on social media online. When, you know, when Celsius gets over a thousand people, they were trying to reply to that. They were trying to reply to a lot of their comments yesterday and at least give a like or a shout out. And just as an example, they have seven social media, full-time social media employees just to handle uh, their communication. So they interact with their clients, which is huge. Now, this is something that is very near and dear to me. And I want you to think of what a bad logo can cost you. And a lot of times with small businesses, this is kind of the biggest mistake. You'll go to 99designs, you'll go to something. Not that there aren't decent artists out there that can do that, but a lot of times I wind up getting companies coming to me to fix them. And it costs more to fix it than do it the right way to begin with. Because, you know, I don't know, maybe, you know, you're spending a hundred bucks there. Meanwhile, maybe you spend a thousand, but every, everything's going to be consistent. You're going to have every single thing you need in the right format. And um, you'll understand that a little more later. One, you know, it won't connect with your prospects if it's not saying or communicating the right visual identity. It can deliver the wrong message about what you are and who you do and give the idea that you have poor quality standards. And that's huge because once it's in their minds, that means something. I also feel this way strongly about business cards. Um, really flimsy, thin business cards that are hard to read. You know, I mean, people's, people are going to throw it away. I have a cool business card and, you know, people tell me years later, they're holding on to it. And then they call me later and say, oh, I got your business card, you know, two years ago, but they don't want to throw it away because it's cool enough. Anyway, uh, might be too generic to be memorable. Um, is it hard to read on business cards and will it confuse people about what you do? Here's an example. And I'm just gonna show you, this is my brand name, obviously. You can't read it very well. And you know, this is more like an image. Here's something a lot of people do. They stick an image in there, which is not a properly made vector graphic, which is a type of design style that you can size. This is a pixel based image. Okay, my brand name. Okay, well, you can tell by this, you get a feeling it has something to do with the ocean. Maybe, you know, it, you, this visually can tell somebody, hey, you know, it gives you a feeling about what they probably have something to do with. So that was just the quick example of doing it right the first time, making sure everything's weighted correctly, you know, and um, it gets your point across. When we bring the clients we work with, we make sure that every single element from their logo to their collateral material, their packaging, digital marketing, everything is branded. If you don't, you lose out on that opportunity. Quick example, like what if you're, if you put out five different advertisements and they're all completely different, and maybe just your logo ties it in, you know, you're not going to have that consistency. If you have one or two ads that are constantly hitting somebody over the head, maybe the fourth time they see it, they'll start, they'll start actually recognizing your brand and saying, oh, wow, I really kind of need that and they might remember it later. Uh, every choice we make visually ties back to the specific goals of the organization and its identity. We also make sure our assets are not only consistent, cohesive, but well executed. And when I say assets, that means everything that is your brand. So when you buy something or, you know, all of your logos are cor you know, correct. So you have it horizontally and you have it vertically and you have the icon on its own and you have the type on its own. So sometimes when you're printing something on a pen, like Amy knows, it, you know, it's super tiny. You got to make sure it's legible and you know you can get your point across and you're not smashing it into a space so just make sure everything's well executed now i want to go through and consider the most recognizable brands in the world often the most trusted okay you know you sit there all you need is a swoosh of course they put you know the company's been around forever we're going to dive into them a little deeper you know let's i had to put fender up there because my son's obsessed with music he has seven guitars so you know that's something you have to do. Pillsbury, everybody knows the Doughboy. Do Obviously, I'm, I love Pillsbury because I worked there. We actually worked on like a huge building in Minneapolis and they had a giant Pillsbury Doughboy that would go up and down in the elevator and all the employees would sit there and poke it and the people inside would get really irritated because it would giggle every time you poked it. So talk about brand consistency. Uh, Tide, you know, you just think of all of these being the best or being very recognizable what they do. 
not necessarily like rooms to go, not the highest end, but you know exactly what you're getting with rooms to go when you see that logo and the World Wildlife Foundation, same thing. So I wanna do a quick little synopsis of something. You don't get bored, stay consistent in your messaging. So think of the Nike's Just Do It campaign. It's a campaign that obviously everyone's familiar with and most of people and even some of the younger ones here um, wouldn't remember this, but the very first Just Do It campaign started in 1988. And you know, it was, a, it was an older man running across the bridge in San Francisco and then they zoom in on him and it's him, you know, having a voiceover behind him and talking and he's saying, Hey, I'm Walt Stack. I'm 80 years old. And I think he believes he says, you know, I run 17 miles a day. And I think it's like, why do you do it? And he said, just, just do it. I don't know if anybody remembers that campaign or that first ad. But anyway, so fast forward, think about that 1988, 30 years later, exactly to 2018, Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. So 30 years later, they're still saying, just do it. Like that is hugely impactful. And you just realize how much energy they're putting into to their messaging, staying the same. This is what I think is brilliant. So let's bring that like What I'm trying to do is, is start talking about the digital world. Now here we come virtually, here's just do it. This is very, you know, social media gives you a free and consistent uh, way to, communicate with your audience and stay relevant and keep them informed, you know, hashtag stop Asian hate. And this is exactly how you communicate with your people. Everything that they do ties back into, um, they're very big in what's going on in society in the day and staying relevant and staying consistent and, and feeling that empowerment. This is what they put out. And I think this is probably one of the best things I've ever seen um, during Black Lives Matter. This is their social media feed. And I think this is the only time they've ever played on that tagline. And they said, for once, don't do it, which I just think was amazing. So, you know, think about how much they've spent hammering that idea in. Now for a quick local example of branding for a company without a Nike budget, this is one of ours. Um, we were asked to do a spinoff on, there's a company in Delray, if anyone's familiar, called Two Fat Cookies. They've been around forever. It's a little bakery that was started by um a couple and then they had kids and their kids now work there and the kids came in with them and said you know we want to we're going to start breakfast and then you know they came in saying we want to be called like the secret window because they had a window next to their bakery and uh i was saying you know your brand is not it has nothing to do with the secret window your brand is too fat and they said well nobody wants to think of fat when they think of breakfast and i was like everybody wants to think of getting a big fat breakfast sandwich and you know, you don't want something skimpy and that's kind of what they show. So this was our suggestion is we kept the, the two fat consistent with their two fat cookies. And we actually recently rebranded two fat cookies as well um, with their logo because we didn't come up with that name originally. So these are their social media posts that we do, you know, keep it consistent. Their logo, their logo colors are bright yellow, black and white. Um, so these are just a couple of examples of social media posts all the way through to their stickers and you know, blend your traditional collateral with digital design. So if we make a sticker for them, hey, we can post it you know, on their social media feed as well. Was there a question? I heard somebody chime in for a second. Um, so here's you know, all of their illustrations. They're two fat cookies too. We do all of their illustrating as well. The cookies are always having a fun time. So hey, their breakfast food should have a fun time too. And, and they're, this is showing, hey, we're in Delray Beach, you know, the egg hanging out on a bacon towel, you know, that gives us the beach effect. And you now these little eggs we have like, you know, and the little avocado toast. Um, again, make sure every element stays on brand. You know, give, give your clients something they can use, you know, pass out those things, talk to Amy about that. If you ever need anything, you know, you can put your logo on anything and People love to get stuff from you. They enjoy, you know, everything you can give them. Again, this was his menu down in the corner when he first got his menu, his face is cut off, but that's Kobe. Um, we've also done their death by pizza, which they came out with afterwards. We designed all of that, but you know, their gift cards, everything, just keep it consistent. All right, let's talk about strategy for your brand. Now, 
this is actually something I thought of, you know, in, in this day and age, how should you reach your audience? And um, if you need any more help with this, you know, talk to Candace later, because this is kind of, how do you want people to see you? Is it through site? Because if you sit there and think, oh, it's all digital media, or it's all, I need to do just a Comcast ad, or I need radio. Think of your brand as being sight, sound, taste, and touch, like, you know, your, your senses. Is it something that like, you know, touch, we deal with a lot in packaging. You might more than likely, most of you guys probably don't have any packaging design, but you know, the way it feels in your hand, the weight of it, the, the texture, and that's through, actually, that's true to a business card too. Like the texture of your card. How does that feel to someone? What does that, what does that evoke in them? Sight, uh, everything sight is video, print, digital, uh, sound. Is it something you can get your message across with just sound and, and, good for the radio. Uh, taste, you know, free tastings, free product placement. You know, is it something, you know, as owning a beverage brand too, we have a really, really good tasting beverage. It's five calories. It, it's not going to jump off a shelf and jump into someone's cart. Maybe some people will, you know, be curious, but when we do taste testings, when we are in Costco, um, you know, we sold, I don't know, a hundred times more than we would without it. Okay, so what is digital marketing? Basically, digital marketing uses digital platforms on the internet to advertise and reach current and potential customers. So I wanna talk about strategy and platforms. I have a lot of slides, so I'll try to get through this quickly. Um, social networking, everybody knows what social networking. Generally speaking, people share their personal opinions, funny stories, and snippets of their family life with older new friends on Facebook and Twitter, a place to catch up on Instagram, a place to catch up with friends from high school or college or even childhood, which means we learn what those people like, who they associate with, and how active they are on social media. LinkedIn, unlike Facebook and Instagram, is for professional networking. It's a great way to meet new people in your industry, post your resume, find job opportunities, or discuss work experiences and culture. I'm gonna just talk a little bit about the differences. Um, Facebook, you know, you create your profile for your business on Facebook is a great way to gain brand recognition. You can post links to your website, details about what you do, and customers can post reviews. Facebook is an easy way to message, communicate with new or existing clients, and you can also post content, including photos, articles, and videos. Um, Facebook is perfect for building a community, learning about your audience, humanizing your brand, brand awareness, and SEO. And all of this social media stuff, especially as a small brand, unless you need to hire people, it's inexpensive, you guys, it's free. You know, there's no better way. This is just communicating with your audience, trying to keep them interactive, reaching out to them. Who should have Facebook? Really any new or existing small business in almost any industry. Your competition most certainly has Facebook and so should you. And that's something too. If you're not sure it's right for you, you're new to the marketplace, see what your competition's up to, see what they're doing on these platforms and how you, know, you can really tell how, how successful it is for them. LinkedIn is great for business. It's great for networking. Um, great to show, especially like for us, if you're hiring, get it out there, ask people to share, highlight and educate people about your company, your brand, let them know what you're doing in the, you know, in the business realm, you stay relevant, um, search engine optimization, having a LinkedIn profile helps, uh, SEO. So do all of these things. Everything helps with SEO, which, you know, if you can't pay for consistent SEO, you have to do it yourself, you know, SEO, Google's constantly you know, just going sifting through all this information. And the more often you're updating your content, the more often you will show up a little bit higher in SEO and people are searching for you. Uh, find new employees and then stay relevant. Instagram's huge. Uh, who uses Instagram? The age group's gone up. Uh, most people are on Instagram now. Everyone, Instagram attracts people posting pictures of their tortoises, their meal planning, their vacations and businesses, advertise, sell there too. Um, you know, these social, these social media numbers are just getting massive, you know, uh, over a billion active users. Um, what else is important? 500 million stories. If people don't understand what stories are, stories last for 24 hours. So if there's something you just want to stay consistent with, you know, you could put a, post a couple stories a day. You can, you know, just try to stay relevant. It pops up in people's feeds at the top faster. Um, should your business have Instagram? Yes, like Facebook, your competition likely uses it. It's relatively easy and provides engagement, insight, and awareness for your business. And especially if you depend on selling. Of course, what you are and what you are selling makes a difference, but it's hyper-targeted and it's inexpensive. Again, if you're doing ads on any of these platforms, the beauty of social media, even if 
you know, you, I'm not a huge personal social media user, but for the business, you know, you have to be part of it and think about how you want to attract those clients. Um, you can hyper, hyper target on these and they give you great analytics and feedback uh, to see who's clicked on your ad. It can send them directly to your website so they can learn more. And it, it's inexpensive. You can try something for 15 bucks a day for a week to see how your ad does. And, you know, hyper target to say, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, a spa in Delray Beach. I want, you know, a two mile radius or a one mile radius if you want people walking. You, know, you can really, really get down there and drill down to the age group you want to target, the, you know, the sex, the everything. And it's, and it's inexpensive. It's cheap. It's cheap to try. Pinterest, people might not be as familiar with, and I'm ignoring TikTok on here, which is huge now, but the TikTok age group is generally under 29. Um, the biggest users being between 10 years old and 19. So uh, Pinterest is like, if you're looking for something, if it's interior design. So if you have products or you have, you know, interior design service or something like that, you could definitely advertise on Pinterest. So again, millions of users, 50% um, of millennials use Pinterest. People are on there all the time, just looking up for ideas of, of things they like and industries that should use Pinterest are fashion, food, auto, interior design and travel. These businesses find a large number of users are ready and willing to spend based on their pins. Again, it's inexpensive and you could advertise on any of these. Um, this was just about social media and I think you guys wanna, might wanna write these down. To manage your digital media, consider using a management platform. You could try both of these. I put it in there. Uh, Hootsuite has a 30 day free trial. And then the plans, you know, there is a free plan. There's a $29 a month. They help you get your message out across all platforms. So you don't have to sit there and log on to Instagram and onto Facebook and onto TikTok or onto everything. They will help you manage it and put your message across all the platforms. Um, Hootsuite's the biggest social media management too, over 15 million people, more than 100, uh, over more than 800 of their Fortune 5, 1000 companies. Um, it's an all-in-one platform that allows you to curate and schedule content, measure your social, ROI, which is huge. Keep looking at your analytics, Facebook and Instagram. You put an ad out there, the analytics you'll get to see who's clicking on it, what age group where, you know, male or female, what their location is. It's awesome stuff. So they will manage all of that ROI in one place. Um, so you also don't have to log on to everything. Co-schedule um, is something really good for small businesses and nonprofits. It's also, um, has a calendar to manage all of your aspects. It's kind of a little more robust where it's not just social media. You can actually use it more of um, like your content management software. And then you can collaborate with your team, which is awesome too. So if you have you know, multiple employees out there, everybody can get on there and um, talk about your posts. So coschedule.com. So they also have free. Uh, should you use email marketing? Email marketing, uh, one thing I didn't say about our company at Sack Lunch, actually, we are the only uh, agency in all of South Florida. We have our entire, all of our printing in-house. We bought a printing company five years ago. We brought that in-house. So um, a lot of people come to us and say, hey, I want to do this e-blast campaign. And then sometimes we'll talk them into uh, direct mail because, you know, our email boxes are, have, especially over the last year, have gotten very, very, very full with messaging. But it is one of the most significant and effective ways for business to connect with customers and build relationships with them and to stay relevant, especially if you have your, an already existing list of your customers, stay in front of them, say hello. You can do this through uh, direct mail as well. So people were asked actually how they prefer to be reached out to by brands and 78% of people actually answered they'd rather be communicated via email rather than just getting flashing ads in front of them, which is, that's pretty high. That's very relevant. Um, why use email marketing? It's a large reach. You can deliver your specific message and you can target your specific people, especially if you have your own list of people who have already opted in to being a part of what you offer. Um, it's a high return on investment just because it's inexpensive. Your email marketing uh, will be long lasting and the preferred platform of, of consumers. And quick snippet about blogging. Uh, I would say if you are good at writing, 
blog. You know, a lot of just communicate blog. They could be short, they could be fast, but having a blog for your business is a fundamental element of a successful digital marketing strategy. A lot of this is just staying relevant and keeping your content up to date um, as we were ex- like kind of explaining with, uh, you know, with Google for SEO purposes, you know, so as much as you can get up there and, and maybe you can write it yourself or, you know, there are a lot of copywriters out there. You know, we have two copywriters on staff um so it it can get expensive if you're paying copywriters but then also there's a lot of uh freelance copywriters out there that can could help you on platforms such as upwork like upwork.com has tons of people that you could get on there and and you can negotiate prices so a professional blog either be its own website or a section of your existing website the subject of your blogs should be relevant to your industry timely and compelling And the benefits of blogging is boost your SEO. That's probably, I think the main one and establish brand authority, connect with people, um, give people valuable information and generate leads, uh, tips for successful business blogging, choose interesting topics, utilize keyword research, which is, you know, everything that has to do with your brand and what you do, you know, make sure those words are being hit upon and, you know, drive those into as often as you can and you blog often and hire someone to write the blogs for you if you can't do it yourself. So to summarize the whole thing, your goals through branding are to create long-term trust and relationships with your audience, strengthen your identity, engage and grow on social media and always remain cohesive. Your visual identity should reflect your mission, your values, what impact you've had so far and what impact you continue to have. This is great too, like what are you doing within the community you know, especially as the chamber itself, you know, who are you reaching out to? How, how have you guys, you know, gotten in touch with people? What impact have you had in the community? How have you helped every single small business? You know, um, testimonials are great for that. So the seven benefits of digital marketing are to gain consumer trust and loyalty. You know, they'll believe in your brand, grow your audience, whether through advertising or not, uh, or just staying consistent humanize your brand, stay relevant, communicate with those people. Like I was saying, if, if people are talking to you on social media, respond to them, you know, consistent brand identity. Another thing, um, provide exceptional customer service kind of goes into humanizing your brand too. If people are posting complaints or you're, you know, they have issues about your brand, you know, try to answer them, stay relevant, you know, it's get on top of it, try to nip it in the bud before it becomes, a, you know, a bigger argument. Social media allows your business to quickly respond to complaints and fix problems that your customers may have had. Uh, talk and get to know your customers. It provides you a platform to talk to these people. If they reach out, you know, say, hey, it's great to hear from you. Thanks for letting us know. It is just a way people communicate now. And then Measure your results. Uh, while it used to be an exp- expensive to analyze and see your paid advertising results, sometimes even impossible to measure, most of these platforms give you free access to analytical tools that are easy to use and decipher. I'm telling you, if you haven't run ads on Facebook or Instagram or any of these platforms and then like Hootsuite and the way they measure all your results and analyze the data, it's, you know, it's so quick and you can easily see you know, what you're getting for your what your return on investment is. Now here's some homework. If you guys just want to think about your brand, uh, sit down and take the time to define and develop your brand story. Do you have a brand story? Write or type out the who, what, where, why, and how of your brand. And this will help you discover which digital platforms work best for you. You know, and think of that sight, sound, taste, and touch, you know, if, if those are relevant to you. And you can kind of do this in a little grid, you know, just make sure people make sure you understand who your audience is and where you might be able to reach them and how. And then secondly, clearly define your goals for the next three, six, and 12 months. Another thing um, I've given presentations before on doing a marketing strategy and a lot of these, you know, people seem overwhelmed by it, but, you know, map out a time chart, map out a timeline, give yourself three, six, and 12 months. Hey, today's good Friday, this weekend's Easter. Would that have been relevant to your brand to say something about that on social media? you know, start planning for that. When you, when you come up with your marketing strategy, you put, Hey, here's Easter. This is what we want to hit. This is the target we want to hit. These are the, how many people we want to hit. Then you have to back that up. Let's say six weeks, 
in Celsius's case for April Fools, maybe they give you a week and a half to come up with something. Anyway, um, it's not as simple as to make more money. Sometimes it might be to expand your reach, broaden your demographic, find out where uh, you should target your advertising spend and efforts. So that is the homework I wanted to give you guys. And if you need help with your brand, there's Candice at SackLunchAgency.com. Feel free to reach out to her. You can reach out to me too, Cara at SackLunchAgency. Um, I'm not great at responding to email very quickly, but uh, that's it. And I can open it up to questions and stop sharing my screen. Fabulous, fabulous. Thank you so much. Um, especially the breakdown of all the different social medias and who's reading it and who's or you know who uses it, who doesn't, and making it um, manageable, making us all realize that it's not as big. I mean, it's big, but that we could all part, you know, do this um, and giving us kind of steps on how to do it. So let's open it up for questions. I have a quick um, question. Sure, Ken. How's text marketing? Oh, that's actually, that's a great question. And it's funny because how many times this is something that drives me crazy. I go and I get my haircut and I've told my hairdresser, you know, I've told salons this a million times. And this is what I'm saying. A lot of people don't take you up on everything you say. And I said, look, I, I should be getting a haircut every three months, but I forget. And I go once a year because I get so busy. And I'm like, if they would, they have my information, they have my phone number. There are great platforms out there too to automate your, your texting. So you plug it in, hey, I'm going on this date, hit me up every three months and say, hey, car, are you ready for that haircut? Reply yes, if you want someone to reach out to us. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely great if you have captured people and you wanna set reminders. I wouldn't just, you know, sometimes you can set a reminder or, or a once a month text to say, hey, we're offering this right now. You know, if you already have if you have those people as opt-ins, I wouldn't text market to people that aren't on a list or already your customers. Great question. Mm -hmm. Who else has a question? Gary, did you have a question? Um, no, but I do. Have, I could ask a question actually. Um, oh. Can you speak a little bit about YouTube, where that's going and maybe how yeah. that works for marketing? YouTube. I just had a question about that. So Yeah, YouTube isn't really a social media platform, but it is video and if you have great video and relevant video, which everybody should because video is everything these days. Mm -hmm. um, their advertising is actually very interesting. The way YouTube handles advertising, unlike social media, social media drills down into exactly what, the, what is this person touching and doing? YouTube looks at everybody as types of people. So it's like, oh, we're going to define this person as the hipster uh, organic person and they come up with these uh, types of people which is, is really fascinating and you can hyper target areas and what people are watching on YouTube and it's it's great for the younger audience um, so you could say like a sports enthusiast and it's it's relatively inexpensive too but you have to have a good video out there on YouTube and the cool thing about YouTube too if you don't pay for your ad unless people watch it all the way through. So mm -hmm. you, they don't charge you unless people watch all 30 seconds of your ad because you know you can skip ads really quick. They'll get those impressions in front of you. You have to sit for it through like three or four seconds of it, which you know if your brand logo is up there like right away and your messages it hits them really quick. You know even if they skip it, you're still getting eyeballs on it. Cara, I have a quick Thank question. You. If it's okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. So one of the things is, I think people don't understand the difference between creativity and like too much going on. You know, you don't have to have something, a business card with 50 million colors on it to be creative. It can be creative, but really simple. And I don't want to offend anybody, but that's never stopped me before. I hate, there was a, fa there was a phase or fad there with those round business cards. I personally, there's no place to put them. You know, you don't have a round slot in your wallet. You don't have a round slot. So can you kind of just speak to like being creative, but creative doesn't mean you have to have Disneyland. Yeah, well, that's, I always tell people too, you, you, there's no excuse for bad design. If you have a low budget, you know, and you only, oh, you know, printing used to be so expensive. It'd be like, oh, I can only afford one color. Okay, you can afford one color, 
but you could still make the design good, you know, and, you know, creativity, it's all a balance. A lot of my clients will say, and that's kind of why I wanted to say, you know, something about how much a bad logo costs you, but it's all about balance from an artistic standpoint. A lot of people say, Hey, car, you know, I want, but I want this to stand out. I want this to stand out. Can you make it bold? So it can, Oh, it's bold. Okay. Can you make it italics? Okay. Now it's bold and italics. Can you make it all caps? Okay. Now I can make it bold, all caps and italics. Guess what? Now you can't even read it. And they think it's screaming at you because it's bold. It's got this italic and bold and, you know, but yeah, it doesn't, you know, something subtle, you have small type and then you have one, you know, one thing that's a little bolder, you're going to see the thing that's a little bolder before you see the, the light type. So absolutely. And I used to under, I used to joke around. One of the things I didn't understand is why realtors had to put their pictures on every card. You know, why just realtors? Why do they have their photos? And, you know, especially, I mean, no offense as well, but you know, if you're not super attractive, like, do you want your photo on there? <laughs> then I started realizing, well, as a single woman, maybe if you're going to meet someone, you'd want to know what they look like. But most every person has a picture from like 20 years ago anyway. So, well, yeah. you go to Pamela for that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I understand maybe they have to have their photo on there just to, you know, who you're meeting up with. Um, Kara, this is Maureen. I have a question for you. Is there like a third party that could evaluate some of the branding that we do? So all of the good tips that you mentioned today, we would be sure that we're on or off target. That would be what we do. <laughs> okay. Would be an agent. You'd call an agency. Okay. Now, um, you go in, you say, what have you been doing? What's your strategy been? Where are you spending your dollars? That's something Candace is getting familiar with. Um, we look at certain clients, you take it in there. They give us a breakdown of where they're spending their money. You know, some people are still doing 10 billboards. Okay. How much are you hit, but not doing social media. You know, that's just a shame. So yeah. Who else? Who else has questions? Um, I have a question, two questions. Um, first, the, the changes on Facebook, you know, they're constantly changing for marketing, which now is Instagram. Are Do you, as somebody that follows that, obviously, and has to know all about that all the time, do you like the new changes? Is this good for advertisers or is it not? It's, it really depends. Like, it's unbelievable how you can hyper target everybody. Um, what Facebook does, you have to watch what you say. Uh, they will bounce ads if you put content on there that's not, you know, they are more careful about what you say these days. Um, so you, they will approve an ad. So whatever you say, they'll, they'll look at it and say, okay, yeah, we can post this. Um, but it's hard. It, it's a constantly moving target and, and they'll make mistakes and they'll, you know, then they'll retract and say, okay, this isn't working. It's not making them enough money. So it really depends, you know, on what they're doing. But honestly, like social media advertising, some of the things we've done, especially when this pandemic first hit, we were, I, we were making so many videos, um, a lot, you know, for, for profit companies and then some for nonprofits, you know, like JFS started, we, we did like five ads for JFS because they were trying to target those people that were in need. You know, they needed to, like everyone's familiar with mm -hmm. JFS. Yeah, I mean, they needed to target those people that weren't getting fed and were scared to leave their houses and, you know, here's what we can do. And the results were astounding, you know? So it, because maybe younger people were out there on Instagram saying, oh man, my mom's, you know, needs help or somebody that I know needs help. So it, it's, it's great the way you can hyper target people. So that, that rolls into my second question. What, what's changed since COVID that you expect will continue now forever when it comes to marketing? Um, probably just more digital, more video. People are more comfortable. Everybody's been on their phones more and their computers more. You know, and that I would say is all the age ranges. You know, think about it. People probably weren't constantly searching the web on their phones. Maybe if they're in their 50s, 60s, you know, more so than they are now because they were home. People that I think use of social media went up by like 110% because people were on there constantly. So if you've gotten involved and you weren't on there as much, but now you have more of a, you know, a, a I guess getting, I don't know, what was the word? 
you know, you're predisposed to be doing it constantly now. And, and so you think about it when you wake up in the morning, I don't think that's going to go anywhere. I think more people are just going to be on the platforms. All right. Uh, Glenn, you have a question. You need to unmute. Um, uh, hi. So, uh, so I've, in my life, I've done a lot of uh, online promoting, selling things and uh, selling ideas, basically, and bringing people together. And now that I'm, I'm here in Boynton uh, running the public art program, the goal is to bring human beings here. All right. And so what's the difference in terms of uh, branding and thinking when it comes to moving human beings to a particular place as opposed to just uh, gaining their recognition and uh, staying online with you? Well, that's, that's a great question. And I, I probably our, our quick example of two fat breakfast, you know, promoting, Hey, you know, they're, they're a location. They wanted people to get down there actually during COVID they, that window, because they stayed open when Starbucks was closed. Um, they had more foot traffic. They blew up. They, they were incredibly successful at that time. If you show people outdoors, especially right now, you know, I don't know how your art is laid out, but if people are outdoors and can freely walk through, I would yes. show video, 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 video of people enjoying that art, you know, have them filmed going up to, to see the arts, to, to interact with their families, you know, families holding hands with their kids, talking to them about art and just showing people enjoying themselves. Everybody's looking for something to do right now outside and being the beauty about being local and if your audience is a small local area, mm -hmm. you, you can pay 10 bucks a day and, or 10, you know, 10 or $15 a day and promote in that at one mile or two mile radius of where you are and you know, put your logo out there, put your name out there, show your location, show people having a great time and advertise directly to those people. And you, know, you can target the age group you know, if, if it's parents or you know, grandparents that like to go uh -huh. together, but absolutely. I think that's a, it's a okay. perfect way to drive people to, to see you. Okay, thanks. All right, any other questions? Well, thank you so much, Cara. Um, you know, it's, it's a balance. Like you said, it's not just uh, one thing. It's social media. It's, you said you even brought up billboards, brought up video. I mean, it's amazing how things have changed in the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you know, when you go back to just do it, when, when all we had, when, when they first started advertising was print and television and radio. And now we've got all these other things coming at us. So yeah, um, and really a quick, a quick shout out to, um, to what like Greg does. We, we design a lot of, of buses. We just, we just did, um, we've done like all of JFS fleets and things like that wrap your cars, wrap your, it, it maybe costs you 2,500 bucks. That's a moving billboard. You think of people spending $10,000 on one billboard for one month, you wrap your car or you wrap your van and you do a beautiful job at it. That thing's driving all over the County, it, you know, advertising, you it, there's, there's a million ways. And then the thing with like direct mail that I was talking about, you know, now people don't get a lot of mail. I terrible at checking my mail. And I always forget to check my mail, but when I do, you know, my mailbox isn't packed full. Like it used to be 10, 15 years ago, everybody was doing direct mail. Now people open their mail, they sift through it because it's not overwhelming. And there might be something cool that you could send people, you know, to capture their attention. So. To follow up, excuse me, to follow up with Kara said, mm -hmm. a commercial vehicle gets about 30 to 40,000 impressions a day as it travels around. It's uh journey through wherever yeah. the business is. So it's a very valuable way to get your, your image out to the marketplace. I didn't, I just accidentally wrote to Amy for somehow, but somebody asked me if we do uh, if we do video and yeah, we do 3D animation. We do actual video filming, um, any of it. Yeah, we do all of it. Kara, I have a, I have a question if I may. Mm -hmm. Uh, first of all, thank you for the excellent presentation. That was really very relevant and very helpful. Uh, coming to the social media, as you said, this is the platform. This is where everybody's going. And uh, 
producing the content uh, for marketing. We've gone from the written now to short attention spans, obviously, as people are going through so many different platforms. What videos and, and images seem to be the thing that uh, uh, connect? What's, what's the right size of a video? Would you say time? That's, that's a, well, there's, that's actually really a good question too, because it's not it, in two ways. The length of a video is important. People don't have attention spans. Um, like on Instagram, think of your scrolling. Think of your scrolling. They might pause. And it was something that was something I was telling Celsius. I loved this thing that we did, but we literally didn't have time to animate it. We got it to them the night before April Fool's because um, we kept going back and forth. But if that had been animated, it probably would have gotten three times the amount of hits because people do stop to see this. Usually what you want is you'll want a photo with, with some kind of large typography that says exactly what you're, you do and is reaching out to them to like hit them. We did a bunch of ads for um, like a hurricane shutter company, you know, during hurricane season. And it's like, it's hurricane season, you know? I mean, that stops you going, oh yeah. And it shows a big hurricane. Like it, it makes you think, yeah, it is hurricane season. So you, you want to hit them over the head with your message really quick. And you definitely want moving animated content on your videos. So people will actually stop and look at it. And the other part about your question is I get a lot of people bringing me their video ads that they've created for, um, TV, which is a large horizontal format. Now, Facebook and Instagram, you, you, you want a square because it, it maximizes, there's two ways you can actually put- The ratios. Feed, yeah, the ratios and, and feed video into those platforms. Mm -hmm. So you wanna actually create your video to be within that square because otherwise it's much smaller and it's not, it's not you know, as impactful. You're not covering as much screen. Thank you. Wow. All right, and last chance for questions. We've got the master here. Learned a lot, that's for sure. Um, well, thank you so much, Cara. Thank You're you welcome. for your for an hour of, of letting us get in your mind and, and learning. Yes, I appreciate you all coming, and I appreciate you, Cara, for all of your information. And I look forward to seeing you all on social media in your brands excellent on social media this weekend when I'm scrolling for 10 hours online because that's what I do now so like everyone else so thank you all very much and have a great weekend and happy holidays to everyone thank you thank you